Okay, paper can be very simple or can be very complex. So we will just go ahead and make material. I have this set up already um, on a link. You can download it and you can start working on this piece of paper I have folded here. It's placed against a uh, door so we can use it to see the transparency of paper. You can uh, copy some of these parameters or you can change them depending on how you like to, to see it on your render. Now let's make the paper material. Start with a uh, simple V-Ray material. We will call this uh, paper one and apply it to the plane. We will change these parameters as we go along. A medium gray will be okay for the, for the color right now. Add a little bit of reflection and uh, a little bit of glossiness, maybe not as high. And then we have, we're going to leave this Fresnel reflection, which is appropriate for a paper. The BRDF can be Blin or Ward, but that's not important at this moment. Bling is fine. Let's render and see our basic piece of paper. So now we need to add some of the properties of paper. If you look at uh, one of the properties of paper is translucency or the transparency of the paper. So these two here are used in special occasions. So we'll use hybrid, which is the most commonly used type of transparency for most materials. Leave the thickness and we will not use it. Now, every time you use transparency, you have to add a little refraction just to make this happen. So a little bit of this is fine. And another property is the glossiness of the paper. You know, paper comes in matte to high gloss finish. So it's up to you uh, what type of, of finish you're going to be using. So a little more refraction here, and we'll render a test to see what that looks like. We expect to see a transparent piece of paper. So there, that's basically what we have. Now you can make some adjustments and save it for future use. You know, as a basic default paper. All right. Now if you add some texture to it, something like this map here to the diffuse, then you can see that it doesn't affect the transparency. It works very well. You can modify this depending on the quality of the paper you're trying to make too. All right. Let's see, another thing we can do here is this. Um, well, you can make your own materials folder and add it to the library. If you click here, you can click on New Material Library. So open it and uh, name it something like um, you know, organic materials or paper materials, etc. And then uh, save it. So next time you make a new material, just drag the material from here onto that slot and you will have it for future use. Well, let me show you an example. I'm going to remove this material from here and I'm going to bring a copy of the one I saved, which has all the basic parameters. I'm going to just change the color because I'm making a post-it. Looks like a little bit yellow. And I'll apply to the post-its and we'll render. And so you can quickly add a paper material this way. Of course, the more transparency materials in your scene, the longer it's going to take to render. Now, how about making a different material? How about something like toilet paper? You know, toilet paper is very soft. It reflects light a, a little bit in a different way. So let's try to do this. I mean, I'm going to render the whole thing. We're going to make the whole, the, the, the model and the paper material. So I need some source to look at, you know, some photographs. We also need to see 
the sizes. You need to see the size of the uh, toilet paper. You know, average. Here's in millimeters, and I can convert this to inches. We also need to see the inner piece and the way the paper tears. We can add that just to add some more realism. So we start with the tube. We'll give the sizes that uh, that I see on the internet, and we'll make some modifications. So first, let's give it a smooth edge outside here on these two edges using chamfer. Don't forget you can stop the video anytime to see how this has been done. It's not really a very basic uh, tutorial. And you're supposed to know how to model a few things like this. Select a loop here and add another line. This is just to define the edges of this curvature. Now, if you select everything here like this and deselect the outside, then you have the inside selected. You can remove it, just delete it. And that's what we have. Now, let's do the, uh, the um, make it look a little softer by changing this here. Look, if you make it like this, it looks like by its own weight it, and because of it, of uh, the softness, it looks almost like a pillow. Now we need to add a, a tissue paper on top here. So I think I complicated myself by not just using a simple plane. But I guess I wanted to use the uh, a quick uh, copy of this. So extend these lines or this edge and make it look like uh, the piece of paper is just dropping onto the table. Same thing with the back of the paper here. And just making sure everything is just uh, correct. Oops, a little corner here. Okay, so add some turbo and it should look fine. What else do we need? We need a, a, the inner tube here. This is a piece of uh, paper tube that holds everything together. Using the same number of polygons, add turbo smooth, and we have it. Then we add some uh, basic brown color to it. Even though this is also paper, it's not that important. Next, let me make a uh, small piece for the the hanger. We're going to use chrome. We're going to make actually chrome material for this. So bear with me. I'm going to make this a little bit faster, simple, just so we can have something to hold the paper. You can always slow down the video to see what I'm doing here. We're going to make, uh, we, we need to make this edges uh, very smooth, like a piece of chrome. So we'll bevel this. And I think the best way to do, to add the edges, to make them smoother is using Swift Loop, which is under the modeling tab here. So if you know how to just move it over the, one of the uh, faces and uh, find the best spot to add the lines, the lines have to be very close to the uh, to the to the edges where you want the uh, material to stay that way. All right, that's all we need here. I will turn this just uh, for added realism, <laughs> you know like resting on the table. Now we'll make a new material called chrome. And we know that uh, the metals do not reflect diffuse light. So we'll leave this in as black. We will leave this in black, the air reflection. Take off Fresnel. We will have some glossiness. We can work that later. And for the BRDF, we'll use Ward. Now how do we get the color for the metal? We'll use here. We're going to use a uh, fall-off map. So from the standards, use the fall-off map and connect this to the reflect map. So now we need to adjust the parameters of the fall-off. We'll be using perpendicular type. Close this off. Turn on output. Select enable color map. Click on RGB and add two points. 
right click on the points and select Bezier Smooth. And with the handle here, we can change this. Select all the colors and move them up here. You can, you can copy these numbers here because those are very close numbers to make uh, chrome. Now, individually, you can, you know, remove the, uh, turn off the R, G, and use the blue only to move it up a little. We need to get a little bluish color, a little bit more, more blue than, than red. See the color here? If we bring the red down, then you have a little bit more blue there. And uh, let's move this up just a little bit straight here. So apply this to our handle and don't forget to save the material. Let me render and see what it looks like. Okay, you can always check on the elements here, sample rate. If you see this green color here, you may need to adjust a little bit your uh, on your materials of the reflection here, the subdivisions, so you can raise this say 128, see what it does. Maybe it doesn't need that much, depending from how far you're looking at it. So that looks just great. And now we can get back to our toilet paper. All right. Okay, so first thing, we need some information. So we'll go find the, uh, the pattern we need. That looks like a good resolution. We can use this or something similar and you can save it and on your you know editor like Photoshop or something you can bring the image and we're going to make some uh, opacity maps so let's crop this to the size we want to use it that looks good and on a clone or in a copy about the same size I'm going to select the edges or I'm going to work only on the edges and I'm going to use very little white, I mean uh, gray color, uh, using the airbrush here. Let me show you a little close-up. All we need is to paint with um, maybe the airbrush a very soft gray on the edges. This is to give opacity to the edge of the paper so that it will look like it's very soft. So it doesn't have to be a lot, but... You can do this um, and, and test how much gray you need to do. And you do this for both sides of the paper. Okay, I'm going to cut this off and we'll show you both sides done. And on the top of this, we can also use the, uh, you know, the, where the paper tears. There's a little dashes that are cut out. So you can also paint this with a brush. Make little dashes like this. So the darker you make it, the more transparent it will be. So gray is just above what all you need. And we'll save this image. Also, on a copy of this, we're going to make the, uh, the tear effect. You know, you need to use a little imagination and a little bit of artistic talent here to paint something that looks like a, a tear piece of paper. So let's do it this way. Use some gray and some black. Something like this, maybe. So the black areas are going to be completely transparent, while the gray areas are going to uh, be not as transparent, so you will see the effect later. So I'm erasing some areas, making gray in some places, and then we will save the image. So once it's saved as a JPEG or so with the name, we can then add it to our material. Now you can bring one of your paper materials already or, or if we can make a new one, just follow this and we'll, we'll make another one. Basically, like I said before, you can modify a little bit the uh, parameters. In this case, the most important thing will be the transparency. So once you bring your map, bump map, we will attach it. That's the texture, the main texture. Then we'll bring the one with the uh, 
for the opacity with the tear lines and the little edges that are soft. You may have to tile, but uh, it may work just fine. So you can see here a little bit the dashes already. You know, they're working fine and the edges are soft, so it's not visually clear. But this image here, we're going to use it on another piece of paper. So I'm going to make a small rectangular size and attach it to the end of the paper. So we can clone this up and remove the uh, opacity map, this one, and we will use the one we made with the drawing of a tear. Now since the piece of paper is smaller, we're going to crop this in both cases, about the same size, and we will uh, click on apply so that the uh, cropping is applied. Now it's just a matter of making this fit. Hmm. I'll move this so it matches the other one. I'm going to convert this to a poly and uh, give the uh, appearance that it's you know drooping down or falling down up to this point. Now we need to apply also this map to the uh, piece of paper. I'll add a UVW map and we'll correct this using the gizmo. Make this fit. And then, uh, then we will render to see what we have. Now we can render to see what we have here. Okay, from this point on, it's a matter of uh, adjusting the uh, piece of paper at the, at the end, making some corrections. And finally, you can add or correct the brightness of the paper, as we have uh, seen uh, earlier. Now, this part seems to be reversed. So we're going to go to Output and click on Invert. That will change the direction of the uh, black and white map. Let me make this a little wider, more in proportion to the uh, piece of paper I'm using. And uh, that looks much better. So let me attach this a little closer and we'll have a final render. So as you can see, the uh, paper can look uh, soft in this case. And if you like this tutorial, don't forget to give me a like. And I hope to see you soon. Thanks for watching. The next uh, materials are going to be some metals like aluminum. See ya.